And now, as Monty Python used to say, for something completely different. A few weeks ago, I went down to Monte Carlo because Porsche had organized a celebration of, well, 50 years since they first won the Monte Carlo Rally and 40 years since they last won the Monte Carlo Rally. And it was an amazing collection of cars they had down there and people as well. But one thing stood out and I captured a bit of footage which I wanted to share with you all. And it was just one of the most extraordinary passenger rides I've ever had. I'll try and give you now a bit of background. This car is a three liter SC RS and it's the actual car that won in 1978. And the man behind the wheel is a chap called Jean-Pierre Nicolas, who was the driver in 1978, who won the rally, the last time that Porsche won outright. The factory teams had pulled out after 1970, the last time the factory team had, had won, they wanted to leave on a high. But since then, various privateers had been uh, racing the cars and, and, and rallying them. And the Almiras brothers had been preparing particularly good cars. In fact, Jacques Almiras was there uh, in Monte Carlo and I had a ride with him in a full group, full car as well. This car, it has a standard, pretty much standard engine in a Group 4 chassis and this amazing Gitan livery on it as well. And in 1978, Jean-Pierre Nicolas and the car, they didn't go in as favourites by any means. In fact, Jean Tot was meant to be sitting alongside him but then pulled out and somebody else steps in at the last minute as co-driver. The factory uh, Lancia, uh, Stratos and the Fiat 131, driven other, by none other than Walter Roll, were very definitely the favourites. But the weather that year um, played a big part because Monty so frequently, you never know quite what you're going to get. And there was a huge amount of snowfall. And so as the rally progressed, the rear engine 911s uh, and the Alpines, in fact, uh, were doing rather better than anyone had, would have anticipated before the rally and Jean-Pierre Nicolas was, was right up there and obviously in the end took the victory um, over the, the factory cars that were in the rally. It was quite extraordinary and say the first time, the last time that Porsche, a Porsche 911 would win outright the Monte Carlo rally. Anyway, they had these cars down there to celebrate this and I was lucky enough to have a passenger ride and it was extraordinary because Jean-Pierre Nicolas, he was sort of in the restaurant the night before, he was standing there waiting for the lift rather than taking the one flight of stairs up um, up to the restaurant because he said, oh, I'm, I'm too old for this and sort of, and would sort of hobble around and sort of, you know, complain about his joints and that sort of thing. And yet you put him behind the wheel of a car and it was like he was 18, 21 again. It was just amazing to watch. He was so smooth behind the wheel and clearly so comfortable and he drove the car so fast. Uh, I have to say, this, these, were, these were public, these were open roads. Uh, the stage that I was in with him before, we, we got given these, these books here, which has some of the history in it. Um, and also has, has pace notes in it, which you were meant to read. And some, some of the drivers who I sat in with very definitely wanted me to um, read the pace notes and do the trip meter. But uh, Jean-Pierre Nicolas, he, he said to me, uh, when I got in, he said, you, you put that away. He said, you don't need that. And the stage that we were on, in fact, I, I got him to um, sign it at the end. Um, so you can see his signature there. Jean-Pierre Nicolas, down at the bottom. And the stage that we did was from the Col de Chirini, what better name to have as the starting point, um, all the way to L'Eglise saint Dalmas. And it was 40 minutes of just oh, utter bliss, really. The sound from the car is glorious. We drove with the windows down. Um, and hopefully this captures just some of the, the magic, really, of, of that passenger ride uh, over those roads with that man and that car and yeah, hopefully you enjoy it.
waiting for everyone else. Could you just tell me about the car? As you, as you have seen, the car is fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. The engine is a Porsche engine. It's the best engine. And it's uh, 1978 yes. 3-litre SC. It's, it's this car. It's this car. It is this car. That won the rally. Yes. In 78. Yes. <laughs> It's one. It's a standard engine. It's not a, a full uh, development engine, because in '78 with Jacques Almeras, we we thought we would have uh, uh, a lot of snow, and the Group Four engine, which is more powerful, uh, is not so uh, soft. And we need. To, to be competitive on snow, we need a very soft engine with a, with a lot of torque in this car. And really, there is few, he has a Group 4 car. There is few difference between the car, but this one has more torque. Yes. <laughs> and you can see, you can take the uh, air spin uh, in second gear without any problem. Yeah. Fantastic car. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed that, uh, just amazing. I think the sound of that engine reverberating off the rock faces above Monte Carlo will live with me forever. It was just amazing. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Jean-Pierre Nicolas, having seen that footage, um, he's 73 now. Uh, he was in fact world rally champion as a driver with the Renault Alpine team in 1973. He then went on to be head of Peugeot Sport 
uh, from I think 1985 to 2006, um, which meant he was he was World Rally Champion as a team boss uh, in 2000 and 2002 as well when it was the uh, would have been 206. Um, that's a fan fantastic WRC car. I love that car. It just looks so perfect and compact. Um, so he had a fairly extraordinary career. Uh, the car, I'll give you a few more details about that as well if you're interested. So this was, as I say, it was the car, the actual car that won in, in 78. Um, it was a 1974 uh, car, powered 250, um, brake horsepower, five-speed transmission. Um, overall, it weighed less than 1,300 kilos um, uh, when it was optimised, apparently. Um, the car was apparently finally completed just 15 days before the start of that 1978 Monte Carlo rally. Uh, and the Almiras uh, brothers, they, they, they focused particularly on weight saving uh, with the body. Uh, the brake system, uh, large main brake cylinder, front and rear four piston brake calipers. Uh, front brake disc was 304 millimetres in diameter, rear brake disc 309 millimetres in diameter. Typical obviously for a 911 to have larger rear brake discs with all that weight at the back. Um, larger front and rear anti-roll bars with wider diameters, um, performance optimised exhaust. Sounds wonderful, don't really care if it's performance optimised to be honest. Uh, larger oil tank with central oil cooler, um, transmission with modified oil pump and differential lock. Um, after 78, uh, the car was driven by various Spanish drivers um, and Almira had it restored in 2008 and today it's owned by the Spanish team which is uh, Teo Martin Motorsport. Um, and yes, it was just the most wonderful car and he drove it with such panache really uh, and complete skill. The only thing that it left me with at the end of all that was just thinking, wouldn't it be brilliant if Porsche was able to run at the front of the World Rally Championship again today. We've got the RGT cars and there are certain drivers out there uh, you can see on the Monte. Um, they're never challenging for the overall victory but they, they obviously have their own class and it would be just wonderful to see more 911s out on rally stages again. So yeah, somebody needs to make that happen. <laughs>